Hey guys. I'm just gonna wait for a few people to log on real quick. I'm just gonna get situated right here. Hi everyone, happy Thursday. Okay, I think, I think we got enough people. So, okay, so basically what we're doing here at News West 9 is we're getting um, some of our on-air talent to just kind of do fun stuff with y'all while you guys are doing social distancing. And of course we're doing it too. And so we're doing a lot of activities just to kind of engage and um, just do something fun. And so we're doing a painting class. This is Jolina's Art School. And uh, if you know by the title, if you saw it, let me give you all a clue. Eh? Yes? What painting is this? Starry Night by Van Gogh. I decided to be festive because I'm, you know, I'm Jolina and I'm just extra today. Okay, so this painting is a very popular painting. I'm just gonna go over some of the colors that I'm gonna use. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about Van Gogh because this is a painting that was, um, it, it's not only very popular, there's a really large backstory to it. So, okay, what you need is you need blue. I am not gonna use any more of this color blue. You just need some kind of royal blue. And then you need a light blue. I just use the same one and then I put some white in it. Yellow and then orange, black, and then some green, light green and some white. So with this painting, it's going to be a little different from the one I did yesterday. But uh, actually, let's kind of talk about that real quick because we had some artists who kind of followed along yesterday when we did the whole, um, the painting with the West Texas sunrise. And that's the whole point of this is we want to get y'all to uh, kind of join in on the fun too. And plus y'all are really great artists. Like I'm, I was really impressed. Take a look at this. If you missed the show this morning on the sunrise show, this is, once it loads, because this is a really slow computer, because Jolina needs to buy a new one. This is Trinity. Ooh, oh, here it is, in Midland. So she painted that, so good job, Trinity. And then, um, this was from Lindsay. I forgot her last name, but her kids, she and her kids did this. Uh, 11 year old, I think, and a five year old. So good job, so that's what I love to see. So I wanna see y'all do that. If y'all are um, bored, you wanna paint, then paint with me, you know, it's gonna be fun. Okay, let's get started. So the difference with um, the painting that we did yesterday and this one is that this one is all about exaggeration. So from a scale of, I don't know anything about art to expert, this is really easy, even kids can do this. So, okay, so I started off with a royal, just a, any kind of blue, dark blue is preferable. So you wanna do that. And then the brushes that you're gonna use. So this was post-impressionism. I'll explain what that means in a second. See, it's an art class. It's a real art class. Okay, you're gonna need brushes like this. It has a little point to it. And that's what's gonna give you these strokes. And then this one, I haven't used these yet. These are brand new, okay? All right, let's get started. Oh, and just kind of, I'm, I'm really going to simplify this because Van Gogh did a lot of uh, intricate um, like strokes and everything. This is just going to, it's going to look something like this. Kids can do this. I know it looks a little crazy, but uh, we're going to make it as easy as possible. So, okay, here we go. So first, you're going to dip your paint in the light blue, just a little bit. And what you're going to do is you're going to create a swirl right here. So kind of like something like that, just slightly, just so you kind of have, you know, the basic idea, all right? And then you're gonna do another one. This is gonna kind of look like an S right here, see? Just very lightly, all right? You're gonna go over it later. Oh, what's going on here? My butler has a camera. Okay. So a little bit about Van Gogh, he was a Dutch artist, he was from the Netherlands, and this was the post-impressionism era. So if you don't know what that is, that was around the time in the 
late 1800s, they did a lot of like small brush strokes and very vivid colors. And they used a lot of arbitrary colors too. Arbitrary colors essentially means colors that just don't make sense with things in real life. So if the sun was um, like, I guess, purple or they would paint stuff like a green dog, those are arbitrary colors because I mean, unless you're crazy and you paint your dog's green, then you know, there's not really a green dog out there, but you get the point. And um, the one thing that Van Gogh was also known for is actually, Butler, what do you know about Van Gogh? I cut off his ear. He, okay, he mutilated his ear. That's um, a very popular thing that a lot of people, that's what they first think about. But the thing is, is that Van Gogh has a really deep backstory and uh, not a lot of people know about it. So I'm gonna kind of go over that today. Um, Van Gogh had a brother, he had a little brother. He was very close with him, um, actually, during his time when he was painting in Europe, he wrote to his brother quite often. His little brother was named Theo, or I think it was called, or Theo is like the way it was pronounced. And um, yeah, they were very close. He would you know, write to his brother about art, his mental health problems. Um, but the one thing that we still don't know today is what exactly uh, he was diagnosed with. He wouldn't even tell some of his close friends about that. But anyway, okay, so let, let's go back a little bit. So he was from the Netherlands. And, oh, what, by the way, when you're making these strokes, you don't have to make it pretty, just... That's the point of post-impressionism. These little strokes that don't really matter. Any, any kid could do this. Okay, and then you're gonna do a little swirl here, just kind of below, like where the canvas is. Hi, Lindsay. Ooh, girl, yes, please. Please, please, please. We, I don't know if you watched the show, Lindsay, but we, we showed it today. I think we're gonna show your paintings again in the four or the five, so yeah, we love that so much. Y'all are talented. We were really impressed. Okay. Brush strokes, doesn't have to be pretty. So Van Gogh, he traveled all around Europe and then he would eventually move to Paris. That's where the whole story begins. Hi, Violet. Um, and the thing about Paris was he didn't really like the city life. He thought that the city life was kind of overwhelming and he decided that he was gonna go and move to the countryside. And that's exactly what he did. And what you will notice in Van Gogh's paintings was that his paintings became a little brighter as far as uh, warm colors, like yellows were very vivid because there was a lot of pastures out there, a lot of flowers out there, so he liked to do that. Um, and what he also liked too was he really loved the night. And so a lot of people, you know, they would think, oh, you know, it's very dark, like Starry Night is such a dark painting, but no, he loved painting um, anything that was related to the night because he felt that every time he looked at the stars, it made him want to dream. And um, he was really into it. He loved the blues, not music, like I'm talking like the actual <laughs> color. So um, yeah, okay, what else do I need to do? And then you're gonna make a little mountain right here. Right underneath this wave. It's gonna kinda, whoop. Like I said, go crazy. This is post-impressionism. The point of this, y'all, is it's all exaggerated. You have to have exaggerated strokes. That was the whole point of this era in France. And if you guys are wondering, uh, we, well, I'm using acrylic. I personally just like to use acrylic. Hey, Andy, because it dries faster and um, I just prefer it. I've never used oil. Um, I know a lot of famous artists, they used oil back in the day, but I don't know. I just prefer acrylic. Just one good picture. My butler. Y'all know who my butler is. He's Victor Blanco. You've seen him on the morning show before. I know butler. I just call him butler because it's funny. Okay. Just go over a few layers. Oh, by the way, if you're doing the background, I would say do two coats if you can. So like let it dry. And also a hack that you can do is you can use a hair dryer to just speed up the drying process and it'll dry very quickly. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit more here. 
Smile. Blanco's taking some pictures. Okay, I want to read you a quote to what Van Gogh said to his little brother when he was, he would write letters all the time. He said, I must also have a starry night with cypresses or perhaps above all, a field of ripe corn. There are wonderful nights here. So I told y'all, like, he really, really loved painting the night. Now, later on, uh, when he moved to the countryside, he later moved in with another painter because he started to reconnect or like connect with the community. He made a lot of friends when he moved to the countryside. And then when he did, he met this painter. They basically became roomies, but they didn't really get along very well. They were fighting. And so uh, Van Gogh was going through these episodes where one day he would be really, really sad and he would just... He didn't really understand why a lot of people didn't like him. Um, actually, in fact, his neighbors, he was living in this place called the Yellow House, and his neighbors didn't like him. They wanted, they had a petition to kick him out. Like, they just didn't like him. They were scared of him. Okay, I'm gonna dry that off. Dry your brushes in between each color. And I always have, like, a little water cup, so that will loosen up the paint. And I said this yesterday, I'm always gonna say it, make sure you leave no paint on here. I mean, it's inevitable that sometimes you're gonna get a stain, but you just don't want it to damage your brushes. If you paint and then you leave it on the palette, it's, yeah, you're gonna damage the brushes. My mom's here, hi mom. <laughs> Thank you for watching my, my, uh, my art class. Okay. My mom's in San Antonio, she's self-isolating like everyone else. Okay, now I'm gonna do, I think I might do, a water down. Okay, so this one is going to be a little different. So you're going to go back to the light blue. Wipe it off a little bit. Now you want to make it to where it's a little, not transparent, but just like very faded. And then you're just going to do a bunch of brush strokes around here. Just add a little water if you can. So the thing about this painting is that it's kind of a mystery to a lot of people because they, there's a lot of answers and a lot of questions that are still unanswered because Van Gogh, um, he didn't really leave behind a lot of, um, he didn't really talk to a lot of people about like this actual painting. And so there are art experts out there that are still trying to figure out, you know, like, why do the stars look like that? Why are they so rounded? Like, why do they have this strange uh, circle around them? Like, did he see a nebula? No, Van Gogh did not see a nebula. Hey, Alex. See, now I can actually see who's like joining in. Okay. Remember, don't be afraid to make a bunch of swirls. Hashtag post impressionism. Impressionism is tiny brush strokes. Hey Kelly, no problem. This is fun. This might take a little bit longer because of all these brush strokes, but you get the point. Okay, so yeah, what I was saying about um, people kind of looking into this painting. This painting right now is at the MoMA in New York City. I've never actually seen it in person. I would love to. This is one of my favorite paintings of all time. But um, yeah, it's just, it's just I, I think it's beautiful. There's I think it's the mystery behind it that I really, really like. Have y'all seen um, Loving Vincent? It's that movie that came out not too long ago. It's a movie about Van Gogh. And what's interesting about that movie is they had like 125 artists from over 20 countries. And so they made this entire movie. It's an, it's an entire painting. That's the whole movie. Every frame in that movie. So they shot it on a green screen. And then they went over and all these artists, they just painted like all these frames. I think it was over 65,000 frames that they did. Do you know what that means? That's 65,000 paintings. That's a lot. And I think only a thousand of them actually uh, survived because they had, because it was a movie, they had to keep going over those frames. So just fun fact, I don't know if it's on Hulu, but y'all should really watch it because it's, it's crazy. It's really, really cool. But it talks about his life. Um, the thing about Van Gogh, y'all, was that he was a lonely guy. He was, he was very misunderstood and a lot of people didn't like him. And that's the one thing he would tell his friends. I don't know why people don't like me. 
you know? Okay. I think that's enough blue. I'm kind of tired of this blue. <laughs> okay. Wash your brushes after each stroke. Now I think I'm gonna use a different brush. I'm gonna use the flat brush because it's my favorite. The reason why I like flat brushes so much is because they're just easy to, uh, like look at this, they're just easy, you know? I feel like I have more control over it. So this is gonna be the moon. And then I'm gonna have to go over that and kind of just add some more layers if you can. Okay, wash it off because you don't wanna damage your brushes. Mike, wait, hold on, what is this? My kids and I have been watching Home, it's a kids movie. And the little boy tried eating his painting. <laughs> I've never heard of that. Elizabeth, that's funny. Where's that on? Have y'all been watching a lot of movies since y'all are staying home? I keep hearing about people, they're like, oh, I finished Netflix. I'm like, I know, I know the feeling. Okay. What am I doing? Um, and if you have a flat brush and that's the only thing that you have, that's totally fine. You can still use a flat brush anyway. Okay, what am I doing now? I'm doing the yellow stars. Yeah, so these were what people were, they, they thought that these were nebulas. They're like, oh, Van Gogh saw nebulas outside his window. So where he painted this, he was at the asylum in France and uh, he looked out his window, but what he, what he was telling people was that he painted it by memory. And some people, they don't really believe that. Some um, nowadays, all these art, Experts are saying stuff like, oh, well, you know, the window, if you look outside, hey, John, um, it doesn't really match the actual painting because there's no way he could have seen the city. So, um, yeah, people are just really confused about this painting, but I think that's what makes it interesting. Just do little circles. Oh, and if y'all, it's a DreamWorks movie, can't take a picture on here, but you should look it up. It's called Home. Okay. I will, Elizabeth. Thank you. So you want to make this a little opaque. Uh, what I mean by opaque is that you see how you could still see the blue through here. You're going to keep going back. Actually, let me move this a little bit. Can I move it? Oh, and if you are painting, make sure you have a tarp like underneath you. Okay. Let me see, can I zoom in? I don't know, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna continue painting. And then add little brush strokes, like little yellow brush strokes around. Okay, let me finish my, my story about Van Gogh. I'm trying to remember what I told y'all. <laughs> I was talking about, okay, the window. Um, so Van Gogh died at a really young age. He was only 37. Um, he took his life. He was very, you know, he was not in his right mindset. He, he went through so many episodes. And um, there's some conspiracy theories on, you know, whether he did take his life, but, you know, the, po the point is, is that he was just dealing with a lot of mental health issues. When you, when you do the moon, do little brush strokes around the moon like that. Oh, and also if y'all are trying to find supplies, uh, Michael's right now, they're doing a curbside pickup. See, y'all don't even have to go to the store if uh, that's something you don't want to do. You could 
set up your order online and then just call them and then they will uh, take it to your car. So that's good. Okay, and then this little wave thing right here, you're gonna add some of that yellow there too. Just go crazy, add a bunch of them. So I'm gonna go over that since you could still see some of the blue here. And then I'm gonna go over the moon. It's so funny because Starry Night is one of my favorite paintings and I've never painted it before. I painted, um, I've like recreated paintings by Salvador Dali, which is insane because he's one of those artists that just has such surreal uh, landscapes and just, um, I forgot that name of that one painting with like the melting clocks. That one is one of my favorites too. Okay, I'm gonna wash this off. I might use it later, but not right now. And then I'm gonna go back and do more of these swirls right here. So I'm gonna use the light blue again, but this time I'm gonna use a little bit of the white so that I can lighten it up. So they thought that this part was, they didn't understand the swirls. And that was the one thing that they were trying to, um, like the art, I call them art experts, people who are so into art history, they wanted to know like, why did he do these swirls? What does it mean? Uh, some people think that this means um, it was windy that night, probably. I don't know. We still don't know. So uh, Don McLean wrote this song called Starry Night. It is about Van Gogh. It's called Vincent, I believe. And um, it was basically talking about how Vincent was so misunderstood, which he was. Like I said earlier, for some of you who are joining us, um, his neighbors didn't really like him. They were scared of him. And they, signed, they, wanted this, they made this petition so they could kick him out when he was living in what was called the Yellow House. There's actually a museum, there's like a Van Gogh museum and you can um, virtually access it. Like through their website. Okay, and then on this wave right here, I'm gonna go over that too. In that light blue color, lighter blue. So I guess I should have said that in the beginning, light blue, and then you're gonna use a lighter blue. Okay, and then keep using that lighter blue. And then you're gonna do little marks like this. There's a lot more detail to the original painting, but you know, this is gonna be super easy, just sim trying to simplify it for everyone. So I think I do struggle with <laughs> painting, um, you know, these types of uh, styles like post-impressionism because I don't, 
I personally like precision when it comes to painting. Um, when I was in college, I painted a lot of like pop culture stuff, like Batman and uh, like superheroes, just because I don't know. I was kind of a perfectionist. I didn't really touch things that had such organic uh, styles and brushstrokes, but. And I didn't really like abstract that much, but now I really, really enjoy abstract for like home decor and stuff like that. Okay, what else are we missing? And then if you want, you can do more strokes, but should I do more? Mm, I don't know, maybe I will, a little bit. I wanna know how long it took Van Gogh to do his. And then do some around the moon. Remember, this is all about lines. <laughs> all about lines. Thank you, Lindsay. I appreciate it. I feel like I'm so rusty, though, you know? It's like when you don't do something, an activity, for a really long time. I used to do uh, commission work. I wasn't the greatest, but it was just a fun hobby to do. But I think I got tired of doing the whole commission work because... It was like I was doing something, you know, for the money, and I don't really feel that way about painting. I just like to paint. Okay, what else? What else? Let's do the green right here. We're going to do a little... I might move that a little bit. Okay, so you're going to start off with the dark green. This is going to be for the pasture right here, okay? So, like I said... Don't make it perfect. Post-impressionism isn't about being perfect. It's just about the brush strokes. I feel like I already went over Van Gogh's uh, biography. I don't know if I'm missing anything. Um. What else? What else do I know about Van Gogh? Um, yeah, no one really knew what he was diagnosed with. It was something that he just didn't want to talk about. Um, the whole ear incident, we don't really know why he did that. Um, some people think that he did it as a gesture for a young woman. Um, some people think it was because he kept hearing stuff and he just didn't want to hear it anymore. Um, so, yeah, we just, we really just don't know. I'm trying to see what you said, Lindsay. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see what y'all do. I'm excited. Yeah, Lindsay, so the colors that I'm using, so I'm using the dark blue, and then I used a light blue, but you can just make the light blue by, you know, mixing some white in there. And then I have some green, and then I use light green, but like, if you need to get a lighter color, I just mix it with the white. So you don't have to get a whole shade of light green or anything. Have y'all ever done those uh, painting with a twist classes? Like where you sip on wine and then you paint? I tried doing that, but um, I'm kind of bad with directions, <laughs> to be honest. The thing with art is like, you can really go crazy. Um, when I took, when I was in art, the thing I didn't like about art classes in college was sometimes my teacher would correct me on something and even though I was trying to make a statement she's like no I don't think that's correct but I feel like art is this free world where you could do whatever you want and everyone else's opinion just doesn't matter okay I'm gonna do more of the yellow 
I'm sorry, Lindsay, did I say everything? Uh, dark green, light green, black, white, orange, yellow, blue, and then the light blue. So it's a very um, limited color palette. Okay, so you have done those painting with the twist classes. They really are fun. We had, um, we did something like that in the studio once. It was really cool. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just making this opaque where I'm, I don't really want too much of the blue background to peek through. And there are different types of uh, acrylic paint the one I'm using right now is it's a little liquidy, um, but I don't really mind it that much. Um, you can certainly get some that are a little thicker as far as the consistency goes, and um, it's re it's really up to you. But okay, more stars, I think, uh, right here maybe. The thing that's interesting about Starry Night is anyone can really do it, and then. It doesn't have to be exact, but people can look at that style and, and know exactly what painting that is because it's just so, um, you know, it's just so popular. Has anyone here actually seen it, like the actual painting? I've always wanted to. So, a fun fact, um, people didn't really like Van Gogh's paintings when he was alive. They, um... They weren't really a fan of them. And it's kind of interesting to think about what if he was alive today? What if he could see this legacy that he left behind? You know, and like I was saying with uh, Don McLean when he wrote this song about uh, Vincent, that was a song that Tupac listened to in his hospital room the day he died. Like that song spoke so much to him. And like, I don't think Vincent would have, you know, thought that he would have left this legacy and his paintings are so admired. They go for millions of dollars today. He was just a guy that needed help, that's all. And a strong passion for painting. And Starry Nights. So I just keep going back here and I'm just adding more layers as I go along. Okay, wash it off. So like I said, if y'all want to speed up the process and make sure that each layer dries, you can use a hair, a hair brush, a blow dryer, and um, it'll dry out those uh, the acrylic paint faster. And make sure that when you are painting, you're painting um, in clothing that you don't mind getting dirty because acrylic paint will stain and it's very difficult to uh, get off your clothes. I took advanced placement art in high school when I was living in Japan and this girl one time, she was like tapping the paint like this and opened it up and it squirted all over her clothes. And it was, she was so sad. So yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't wear nice clothes and then paint. Okay, so for this part, I need to like look at this picture for reference. Okay, so there are a uh, lighter green strokes here on the pasture. So like I said in the original one, um, there's like a little town here, and if you want to use that for reference to make it as close to the original, you can. This is just a simpli simplified version. Miss a spot here. I'll just cover that up. That's where the cypress tree is gonna go when you're finished. That's gonna be the last part. 
Okay, it's coming, slowly, but surely. And it's optional if you want to use an easel. Um, this is for my work. <laughs> but uh, easels will probably cost you about maybe like 20 bucks or so. Depends if you want to use them. Some people just paint straight on the table. Okay. So what I'm doing right now is I'm using some of that light blue from earlier. And I'm just dipping a little bit of that white to mix a new shade of a lighter blue. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to go back in here and um, touch more on those swirls. And there are going to be uh, little pieces of yellow in there too, so you can have some of that yellow in the swirls. Okay, then I'm just going to add more here. I keep wanting to call it a sun around this moon right here. This moon that radiates in the night. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to use the smaller brush and I'm just using a little towel to wipe off the excess water. Okay. So white with a smaller brush, these brushes will give you that, you know, those tiny strokes. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing on this little curve right there. I think I said it earlier, but um, so I was actually trying to see the window where uh, Van Gogh was staying because he was staying at an asylum. And I was like, I wonder if that's what the what it kind of looked like. I mean, of course, you know, not all the craziness, but no, it did not. <laughs> it did not. Did not look like that. All right. Now we're going to go with the orange. I'm going to use the same brush. Remember, you want to keep um, washing it and wiping it off. Now for this part, you're going to make a crescent moon. So you're just going to make a C. That's the easiest way I know how to explain it. Okay. And then you're just going to thicken up this line right here. doesn't have to be perfect and then you're going to add some of those orange rays around the moon and 
then don't forget some of these parts too. Okay, and then for each of the individual stars, you're gonna do a little dot, like a little circle like that. And then add little lines. This is all about lines. So as long as you have the patience to create a lot of lines, then that's all that matters. Okay, and if you want, you can add a little bit here too. Just a little bit. Okay, we're almost done. So I'm gonna take some of the yellow and then put some white in there. Just a little bit. Hi, Julie. Julie is our 10 o'clock producer. Okay. Yeah, the point of this is you just want to create a lot of strokes. Okay. So if you can, you know, pick a color and then do different shades around it, like, you know, just yellow and then lighter yellows around that, then that'll work. I'm going to do it around these. I'm sure any parents who are watching right now, if you get your kids to do it, they'll do this in a heartbeat. <laughs> it's a little easier for kids to um, do brush strokes that don't require a lot of, you know, skill to, you know, focus on how this line works and making sure this pump jack looks good. Although that pump jack that some of the kids did yesterday was awesome. Okay. Okay, and I forgot to put some orange there in <laughs> those little stars, so I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, we're almost done. We're almost done. So the next part is the best part because it means you're almost done with the painting. It's the cypress tree. So when I was a kid, I thought that the cypress tree was some kind of haunted house, but I was wrong. And this one, it's just organic lines that you're gonna use. So I'm gonna, it's located right here. If you've seen the painting before, it's right here. So I'm gonna go and do a little swirl. Like I said, does not have to be perfect. This is post-impressionism. We want to focus on the brush strokes. Okay. And then we're going to create a larger swirl. Okay. You're going to do something that kind of looks like that. And then... You're just going to add another branch as it 
goes a little bit higher like that. And this is a tree. It doesn't have to be a perfect tree, okay? This is supposed to be a cypress tree. Van Gogh really, really liked those types of trees. This is a first. I've never given an art history lesson as I'm painting. Okay. Then you're gonna make a little, just a larger body as it, it's all about the curves with the, when you're um, painting here for the tree. Okay, we're almost done, almost done. I'm gonna make the trunk a little bigger. And it's drying very quickly. But I think I'm gonna add a little bit more here. Just some branches. Just do squiggly lines. That's the easiest way I can explain it, squiggly lines. For me, I can, it's easier when I'm using a flat brush. And this is my favorite type of brush whenever I'm painting stuff like this but you can certainly use any type of brush that you'd like. And I'm gonna do that. Okay. Yeah, that paint is drying really fast, so I can see it. Um, and that's kind of it. That's just like the easiest way to really simplify this painting but you really can add more details if you want. So the original painting has some towns down here and they're kind of in like yellow colors. So you can do that if you want. And there's also, okay, I'm just gonna be extra today because it's, it's a Thursday and I feel like being extra. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the black and then a little bit of the white. I want a very, I want a dark gray and I'm gonna use that dark gray. Okay, that's way too light. Uh, when you get a palette like this, you always wanna you know, make sure you don't have too much paint. Okay. And then I'm just gonna add little lines. We're almost done, y'all. We're almost done. I'm sure y'all can do this faster than me. I'm just being a perfectionist, I guess. I don't know. Okay, get some up here. And voila! And that's it. That's Starry Night. It only took me close to an hour to do. <laughs> but um, if you want to do something faster, like the speed painting, that was uh, the West Texas Sunrise. So easy. The kids can do that. But here you go. See? And if you want to um, be even more extra, uh, you can use varnish. So you can um, buy varnish at the store. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna create this really shiny gloss. So, um, and it looks pretty. So when you know you hang it in your kitchen or someplace and then the light hits it, it kind of reflects and it looks really pretty. And also they do have some stuff um, that create, that makes this different type of texture whenever you mix it with the liquidy acrylic paint. Um, some of y'all were asking what I'm using. You can get this at um, any craft store, Walmart, Michaels and uh, like I said earlier, they are doing a curbside pickup so you don't have to go into the store You can just do your orders online um, And then the brushes I got questions on what brushes I'm using 
this is the acrylic white tack on pack so well those knives weren't in there <laughs> but I do like brushes that look like this because they tend to last longer you don't want to get like the really cheap ones because sometimes when you're painting the bristles come off and it's just you know it's just a mess to take off but anyway that is starry night so I hope y'all enjoyed that. If y'all are going to do it, make sure you send us pictures so that way we can run it in the sunrise show. We'll run it in the five o'clock and y'all can have your masterpieces on TV. But um, stay tuned tomorrow. We're going to do another one at 12 o'clock. It's always going to be here on the News West 9 uh, Facebook page. So hope y'all have a great Thursday. See you tomorrow.